What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams, and today I'm going to be discussing from 1977 the original installment from the original trilogy, Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope, starring Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher. Peter Cushing, Alec Guinness, Anthony Daniels, Kenny Baker, Peter Mayhew, David Prowse, and James Earl Jones. What's going on, everybody? Thank you once again for joining me here today on another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. And as I said in the intro, today we begin the original classic trilogy, Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. And yes, there's going to be a little bit of, you know, going off in the weeds in the next coming days because it's not just going to be four, five, and six, as there's three films that fall in between the timelines here. Between A New Hope and Empire is the fabled Star Wars holiday special. And between Empire and Jedi are the two Ewok films. So we've got all that coming up in the next few days. But today we're going to discuss A New Hope. And let's get down to it here, shall we? We begin the film in the midst of a civil war, a galactic civil war. And spies for the Rebel Alliance have stolen the plans for the Galactic Empire space station known as the Death Star which is capable of destroying entire planets. Princess Leia, the Alderaan representative of the Imperial Senate, has obtained the schematics as she's one of the rebellion's secret leaders. However, her starship is being intercepted by an Imperial Star Destroyer under the command of none other than Darth Vader. And before she can be apprehended, Leia hides the plans inside of R2-D2 an astromech droid who flees the ship in an escape pod with his counterpart, C-3PO, a protocol droid. Their escape pod lands on Tatooine, and the two droids are captured by Jawa traders. And the Jawas proceed to sell the droids to a pair of moisture farmers, Owen and Baru Lars, who are raising their nephew, Luke Skywalker. And Luke gets assigned to clean the droids, and as he does so, he ends up triggering a part of a holographic message intended for an Obi-Wan Kenobi. The message is a call for help from Princess Leia. R2-D2 says that, you know, if you remove the restraining bolt that's on me, yeah, I might be able to play the message in its entirety. So Luke goes ahead and he removes it. And then R2-D2 shuts down refusing to play the message as it is intended for Obi-Wan. And when Luke comes back to the, the workshop there, he finds that R2-D2 is missing. And in the morning, he begins searching for him along with C-3PO's assistance. However, he's attacked by sand people, but rescued by old Ben Kenobi. And Luke kind of knows of old Ben. You know, he's a little hermit that lives beyond the Dune Sea. And so when Luke sees Ben, he begins to question him. And he asks him if he has any knowledge of who Obi-Wan is. And Ben tells him that I'm Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's me. That he hasn't gone by Obi-Wan since, oh, before he was born. And he begins to tell Luke some stories from his days back of old when he was a Jedi Knight, just like Luke's father. Obi-Wan tells Luke all about the Force and that Darth Vader, a pupil from his, turned to the dark side and betrayed and murdered Luke's father. Obi-Wan then gives Luke his father's old lightsaber, the weapon of the Jedi. And now that R2-D2 is in the presence of Obi-Wan, 
he goes ahead and he plays the entire message where Leia begs Obi-Wan to take the Death Star plans to her home planet of Alderaan and give them to her father for analysis. Obi-Wan asks Luke to join him, stating that, you know, he's too old for these type of missions. But Luke declines the offer, stating that he's already going to be in trouble with his uncle. As Luke returns home, he discovers that Imperial stormtroopers have killed his aunt and uncle and destroyed the farm in pursuit of the two droids. With nothing else to live for there on the planet, nothing else for him on Tatooine, Luke now goes ahead and he accepts Obi-Wan's offer, join him on his trip to Alderaan, and learn the ways of the Force. Study to become a Jedi just like his father. They travel to Mos Eisley in pursuit of transportation, and Luke and Obi-Wan encounter Chewbacca, the first mate for Han Solo and his Millennium Falcon. They decide to hire Han and Chewie. It just so happens that Han has a price on his head due to owing Jabba the Hutt some money. So this job at this point in time really helps Han out as well. With Imperial Stormtroopers in hot pursuit, Obi-Wan, Luke, R2, C-3PO, Han, and Chewie flee Tatooine on board Han's ship, the Millennium Falcon. And two Star Destroyers try to intercept the Falcon as they reach the planet's orbit, but they are able to evade the Imperials by making the jump to light speed. Before the Falcon can make it to Alderaan, though, Grand Moff Tarkin, the Death Star commander, interrogates Princess Leia about the location of the rebel base, and Tarkin threatens to use the Death Star's power to destroy Leia's home planet of Alderaan. So she tells him that the rebels are on Dantooine. Feeling that Leia is far too trusting, Tarkin orders Alderaan to be destroyed anyways, simply as a display of the battle station's power. And when the group in the Falcon arrives in Alderaan's orbit, there's an asteroid field as a result of the planet having been destroyed. Han sees an Imperial TIE fighter and chases it down, but unfortunately that lapse of judgment allows the Falcon to be captured by the Death Star's tractor beam. Once inside the Death Star, Obi-Wan heads to the tractor beam in order to disable it so the ship can escape. And Luke persuades Han and Chewie to help him find and rescue Princess Leia. After discovering that she is scheduled to be executed, after disabling the tractor beam, Obi-Wan locates his old apprentice, Darth Vader, and the two enter into a lightsaber duel, where Obi-Wan sacrifices his own life in order to allow the rest of the group to escape the Death Star. Using a hidden tracking device, the Empire is able to track the Falcon to the hidden rebel base on Yavin 4. And once analyzed, the stolen schematics for the Death Star reveal a weakness within the thermal exhaust port, which would allow the Rebels to trigger a chain reaction in its main reactor, causing the space station to implode and be destroyed. Han collects his reward from Leia and then abandons the Rebels. He's like, I was just here for the money. I'm not here for your rebellion. I'm not here for your fight. Han takes his money and he leaves. And then Luke joins the rebels in a desperate attack against the approaching Death Star. And all Luke wanted to do is join the fight against the Empire. Even going back to his days on Tatooine, you know, he even tells his aunt and uncle about transmitting his application to the Academy the following semester before Harvest. And his uncle is trying to talk him out of it because harvest is when he needs him the most. All Luke has wanted to do is serve in the fight against the Empire. So once he's there, man, he is on it. And he's in the Starfighter Squadron. The Rebels end up suffering heavy losses, though, during the ensuing battle as Vader leads a squadron of TIE Fighters against them. 
but Han returns unexpectedly with Chewie and the Falcon and aids them in the attack, narrowly saving Luke before Vader can shoot his X-Wing fighter down. Guided by the voice and the spirit of Obi-Wan Kenobi, communicating to Luke through the Force, Luke turns off his targeting computer and uses the Force in order to shoot his torpedoes at the exhaust port, destroying the Death Star just moments before it could fire on the Rebel base. With the Death Star destroyed, we go back to Yavin 4, and there is a beautiful ceremony being held at the Rebel base where Leia gives Luke and Han awards for their courage and bravery. Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope, is such a classic film that it's really hard to nitpick anything bad about it. The only things that I can really nitpick about this film is the fact that I have to watch the special edition versions on DVD or on Disney Plus, and I can't watch the original versions that I grew up with. Because aside from cleaning up the print, which I get needs to be in overtime, I feel like a lot of the stuff that they added to this film was unnecessary. I think a lot of the stuff that they added to all of the special editions was unnecessary. That's personal. There's only a couple of things within them, and I'll talk to them when I get to those dates, that I feel were warranted hindsight being 2020. But there's really nothing in this one that I feel absolutely had to be added to add to the story. But this movie, from start to finish, is such a great soap opera, science fiction story. And dare I say that Carrie Fisher, as Princess Leia, wears quite possibly her most beautiful outfit in the entire saga in this film. Yes, before you can start shooting me down here, the slave outfit in Return of the Jedi is iconic. But I implore you to look at the outfit she's wearing here during the medal ceremony. And tell me if she just doesn't radiate grace, dignity, and beauty. In my opinion, that is the most beautiful Princess Leia outfit in the entire saga. I will die upon that hill. Fight me if you want about it. But no one's going to change my mind that that is the most beautiful Carrie Fisher looks in the saga. When it comes to my ranking of the original Star Wars, I am going to give it four and a half out of five. I really, really love this film. I do feel that there are a couple coming up that are better. That's the only reason I'm giving it four and a half out of five. But there's a reason that this film was able to launch a franchise that has spanned for all of these years and is still having films and TV shows and media and cartoons being cranked out for it because this film launched all of that. What do you guys think of Star Wars A New Hope? If you're watching me here on the live stream, leave your comments over here. If you're watching me on demand, leave your comments down here. Don't forget to get out there on the social media. Try to get those hashtags trending for me. Hashtag Casa D18 Studios, hashtag Renegades Reviews, hashtag Renegade Returns, and of course the ever popular hashtag Shenanigans. We interrupt this episode of Renegades Reviews for an important announcement about merchandising. Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you. 
Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money's made. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the t-shirts you see here from the West Coast professor Jeff Meacham himself. You can get shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network, Talk Wrestling, as well as the red and gold Meachamania shirts. And while you're there, don't forget to get your shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, the Dads on Wrestling shirt, the Renegade JJ Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and the hashtag Stat Boy Approved shirt. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network and score your shirts today. Make sure you get out there. Do what that commercial just told you. Go to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all your official merchandise of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood. Get you your dad's not always on wrestling shirts. Get you my shirt for the Renegade J.J. Williams. Stat Boy Sports Bar. Hashtag Stat Boy Approved. Get you your official shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network. Three designs of the Jeff Meacham Network logo to choose from, along with Meachamania, Talk Wrestling, and so much more. Tomorrow, right back here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, when I bring you yet another brand new installment of Red Engage Reviews, make sure you tune in for the very, very controversial, the very, very talked about, not always in a good way, the Star Wars Holiday Special from 1978, starring Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, Anthony Daniels, Peter Mayhew, James Earl Jones, B. Arthur, Art Carney, Harvey Corman, and the Jefferson Starship. You're definitely not going to want to miss what I have to say about the Star Wars Holiday Special. It's definitely a doozy. I will go ahead and say this before I get to it tomorrow. If you have never seen it before, look for it on YouTube this evening, watch it, and then tune in for my review. If you are a Star Wars fan, it is the type of thing that you must see at least once in your life. You never have to watch it again, but you have to see it at least once. It's one of those things, it's kind of like a train wreck. You don't want to look, but you can't turn your head and look away. And that's all I'm going to say about it for tonight. Thank you guys for watching and joining me here today for another episode of Renegades Reviews. I appreciate each and every one of my loyal viewers. All you guys that tuned into the live stream that have been commenting over here, thank you guys very much. I appreciate each and every one of you. To all of you guys that have been watching on demand, leaving your comments down here, once again, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate every one of you. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for the Star Wars Holiday Special. And until then, I will see you guys next time, and may the Force be with you.